three, two, one, hit it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our top eight coverage of the World Championships of Magic 2010 with Rich Hagen and Pro Tour historian Mr. Brian David Marshall. We are going to get underway with Paulo Vita Dama de Rosa of Brazil. You see him there in his quest for Player of the Year up against Great Britain's Jonathan Randall. That is our quarterfinal kickoff. There you see Randall, 28 from Chester, England. Had a tremendous run, former national champion. And yep. the matchup here, BDM, blue-black for Paolo, blue-white for Randall. Yeah, it's, we, we're going to see a lot of control mirrors in this uh, in this top eight. This is one of the few that uh, we, we see a little variation in the color palette. We see some, some white from uh, Jonathan Randall. But the, the white is going to be a little a little tricky. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 he's positioned really to take, uh, to take advantage of creature decks. And uh, not, not well positioned for the mirror, game one anyway, with uh, four ousts. So uh, that looks like a preordain for Randall. And, it's uh, a it's pair of preordains. Pair of preordains. Preordain, by the way, uh, was the first card played in Brad Nelson's Worlds 2010. Now, is Player of the Year preordained for him? I wonder. He has uh, a little while to wait to find out. Pair, it looks like a uh, creeping tar pit and a drowned catacomb. Mm hmm for Apollo and an uh, island for Jonathan Randall. You see uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor in Paolo's hand. Uh, Manalik on the left, old school Manalik. He hasn't gone with the M11 version. That was a beating over a decade ago. And uh, there you get a little look at uh, uh, Eric Froelich and Guillaume Matignon, they're uh, getting underway in their match. And in the background, you see Guillaume Wafatapa. And uh, now we're back with Paolo and Jonathan. A spreading Seas has uh, landed on a creeping tar pit. It's funny the way the community embraced spreading Seas, the fact that it was such a, a joke to start with. And it takes someone like Jerry T to come along and say, um, by the way, yeah. you are aware how utterly amazing this is. So Inquisition of Kozilek from Paulo is going to see Manalik, Manalik, Oust, Vainslayer Angel, Baby Jace, and two lands. Uh, in the uh, back table, uh, Christopher Wolf <laughs> has a mana advantage of nine to two um, in that one. Uh, I'd say Wolf not actually uh, is is nine two behind. Yansa, of course, has nine mana uh, in the Eldrazi against blue black control. Whether he will be able to force through things to do with his much mana, I guess he can say at least the Emrakul won't get countered. Right. Yeah. Pa Paulo took the baby Jace. It looks like. Mm -hmm. That's Jace Beller, and there are six Jaces in Jonathan's deck. One of the things he felt was an advantage for him in this matchup is all of his, uh, all of his uh, plane, planeswalkers, mm -hmm. which he felt were very good in the mirror. I mean, he matchup. has a, he has a real bunch here. You, he has, you he mentioned has, the six Jace, and then he has six Jace, two Elspeth TRL, and uh, two Gideon Jura. So uh, Paolo is going to go once again to uh, Inquisition Land. Like, uh, what'd you draw? Oh, another Mana Leak, number three. And one will go away. He's like, you can keep the oust. <laughs> really? Oh, sigh. Paolo then taps two. And there's going to be spreading seas back the other way. On the sea chrome coast. Go. Randall draws. Looks like he's drawn another Bane Slayer there. And lay tectonic edge. 
Is there any scenario in this match where the tectonic edges become super relevant? Uh, they're, they're always relevant. I mean, the, the control matchups are all about mana, mm -hmm. and right? it's all about being able to play threats and, and defend them with uh, counter magic. And so, you know, whoever has the most mana in these scenarios often wins. Well, Paolo is going to preordain. He is sitting with uh, multiple mana leaks as well, and that's a case in point where how much mana have you got left? Yeah. Not quite three. Pushes both his cards. And then draws uh, Drew into a land, which he lays. Looks like a dark slick shores. Comes into play tap because there's uh, already three lands in play. Mm -hmm. That was one that people had a while to get used to, the idea that the second one and the third one was, was okay, and it was once you had three. Uh, another nice variant. Sounds like Guillaume Matignon is in pretty decent shape in the first game up against uh, Eric Froelich. Um, he has more creatures in play than the vampires, which is not what you'd expect necessarily, um, and also has more life. Um, so uh, that sounds like pretty good news uh, early on for French fans. Uh, Matignon um, in okay shape against Froelich game one. Those creatures can only be Grave Titans, Grave Titan tokens, or Seagate oracles. I guess one's hoping that they're Grave Titan and Tokens. So Paolo lays... Don't be surprised if we cut over to that match. Indeed. At some point. Three mana, Seagate Oracle. And we're well aware, of course, that Randall has counters for that. And if we're aware, you can be certain that Palavita Domita Rosa is aware. So we may see a, a little bit of attacking for the first time uh, in Worlds 2010 uh, Sunday. That uh, that red zone um, could be a little bit barren today. May not see a, a huge amount of uh, turning sideways. 19 turns. <laughs> Clock. Randall lays another land. There you see he's got uh, a ton of mana there. He's got the spreading seas on his Seachrome coast. There's your uh, attack uh, for one. Uh, yep. It's always a nice touch of worlds. You see the, the flags on the end of the table, the, the Brazilian and the Great Britain Union Jack. In the background, Froelich up against Matignon. Paolo looks to tap three, just uh, assembling his mana. And for three, what have we got? It's interesting, Pal has a reputation as one of the fastest players on tour, but he can he can take his time to think when he needs to. Yeah. He's going to keep tapping the man until it feels right. Yep. <laughs> and there's Seagate Oracle number two, which, again, Randall uh, is fine with. And I can tell you that uh, the first game of uh, the day is done. Guillaume Matignon of France, with his blue-black control deck, leads Eric Froelich by 1-0. to zero. Uh, He got ahead uh, on life, got ahead on uh, creatures, and it's hard to get back from that with vampires. So uh, game one to Matignon. You have a look uh, at uh, Randall's hand there. There's a uh, Bane Slayer Angel, the Mana Leak. He's just going to pass back to uh, Paolo. Sounds like it was a Grave Titan from uh, Guillaume Matignon that did uh, the heavy lifting. It tends to do that a little bit better than Seagate yeah. Oracle. Well, certainly yeah. a little quicker. It's like, I hope you don't mind. I invited some friends over. <laughs> yeah. Mana Leak, Cancel, Jace, TMS. Attack for two. Preordain for Randall. So uh, come into his hand, which he's going to cast now. And yes, that's absolutely fine. Oh, like uh, there was an Elspeth Tyrrell uh, in uh, what he had a look at. Fans uh, out his cards. I like to call it Elspeth Total Request Live. <laughs> that's awesome. I've not heard that one before. Is that your very own? Yeah, it is my very own. Mm, I like that. Hi, you're through to Elspeth Tyrrell. How may I help you? Please, 
Sounds like Grave Titan has taken down another game on the back tables. Guillaume Wafatapa up uh, one game to nothing on Lucas Jaklovsky. You know, people were talking a lot about Primeval Titan coming into this event. They were talking about Inferno Titan uh, in the Jerry Thompson Valakit deck. Mm -hmm. Certainly Frost Titan was kind of a big deal. Grave Titan has been kind of quiet. Uh, it was certainly a card people were very excited about when it first came out, and now it's it's had sort of a coming out party this week at uh, the highest level of play. Uh, it's surprising, really, because you would think that 10 power of guys, uh, 6 mana were quite exciting if it then became 14 power of guys. <laughs> yeah. It does actually seem quite good. So you see the Stu Seagate, Seagate oracles, a million mana on either side. You, If you like land art, you're going to see plenty of it today. That is for <laughs> sure. Bane Slayer, Elspeth Tyrrell. Oust. Gonna need to be a bit louder, Richard, sorry. So it sounds like we have yet another game result. Yeah, now what happened there, uh, this is Christopher Wolf with Blue Black Control against Lovi Jansa from Sweden playing Eldrazi. Uh, the update was nine mana to two in favor of Jansa, but as we said, what's he going to be able to do with it? Well, not enough apparently, because uh, uh, the Grave Titan gives the Austrian uh, the lead one to zero. Now, big news here, we have Jonathan Randall going for Bane Slayer Angel. And you would imagine we're about to see something of a counterspell war. He can mana leak, he can pay, and then he can mana leak again. Mm -hmm. So there is mana leak number one from Palavida Dama de Rosa. It's like, do you want to pay? Would you like to give me another card? What do you want to do here? It's not clear to Jonathan what he wants to do. It's not clear if he wants to pay and try to duress another mana leak or cancel out of uh, Apollo's hand. I mean, at that point, you're ahead. You, you've spent one card and your opponent's cast two, even though sure. uh, they're not hugely exciting in, in the late game. You're still up a card, if you will. Right. Um, but at the point at which you just go, well, I'm going to have a Bane Slayer and you're going to have a mana leak, that doesn't feel uh, a particularly stellar exchange. Randall at 12. Cancel and Mana Leak sitting in Paolo's hand. Plus consume the Meek. He's, looks like he is going to pay. Seems reasonable. Says, please give me another card. Or Doomblade for my Angel. And Paolo, looking at his choices, will run out Mana Leak number two, one presumes. Yeah. And so John says, yep, yeah, fine. Oh, Away wait. you go. You can have a turn. What are you doing with it? He's like, and I still have all this manner for all these. <laughs> so Paolo gives himself a little bit of time to think before he untaps. Is he thinking about a tectonic edge on a tectonic edge? Yes, he, he is. is indeed. So he gets a little bit of value there. Set Randall back just a little. There is Randall. Very difficult guy to read. Our first Jace the Mind sculptor of the 2010 World Championship Top 8. Which is going to resolve and Paolo will go straight into brainstorm mode, please. So the loyalty will stay at 3. How many cards? Seven, but not really, because one of them's oust. <laughs> is this one of those matchups where the first guy to blink is going to lose, generally speaking? Generally speaking. I mean, uh, I mean, to some extent, Paulo, Paulo has that advantage of being able to draw cards with his creatures. And, you know, sort of Puts, puts the onus on Randall to deal with those. He, do, do something. At some point, he has to do something. Yep. He's just going to take two a turn. 
So the clock is at five with Randall at ten. He's drawn uh, Celestial Colonnade, Manleek, uh, at least one else. There's a Day of Judgment, I believe, uh, sitting in there. Randall decides to go fish and have a quick look at Paolo's graveyard. Reminder that Christopher Wolf leads Lowe Yansa by one to zero. Guillaume Wafatapa leads Lucas Yaklovsky by one to zero. And Guillaume Matignon uh, leads Eric Froelich by one to zero. But three zero Grave Titans. Yep. Even as you say those words, dealers around the world. <laughs> so, Randall needing to do something, and he's going to do exactly what he tried to do last time, which was, please, sir, can I have a Bane Slayer Angel? Uh, I would like to mana leak that, and uh, noticeable that Randall had two mana available after the mana leak, and you remember we had the Tectonic Edge last turn. Right. So there is the, I'm sorry, uh, you don't quite have three. Yeah, it's a tapped Celestial Colonnade. Paolo with Jace the Mind Sculptor and Double Seagate Oracle. Looking in pretty reasonable shape here. Game one, it's an awful long way from here to the final and to the world title, but it's a, a decent start. 253 lifetime pro points for the man from Porto Alegre. Only 23. He feels like he's been around forever, and of course... It takes most people forever to get to seven Pro Tour top eights. Indeed. 32 events and seven Pro Tour top eights. It's yes. just extraordinary. To he, can, he can miss his next three events and still be hitting at a 20% clip. Yeah, to compare with uh, Gabriel Nassif, who, of course, was inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, this weekend. Well, that was nine over, around about 53, 55. So Paolo, at the same pace, would have 14 <laughs> Pro Tour top eights. There's a Grave Titan on the left of Paolo's hand. Still got Cancel, so uh, in good shape as far as countering goes. He's got a Spreading Seas, or a two Spreading Seas in hand. In come the two Seagate Oracles. All right, which he can use the Spreading Seas to shut off the potential of that uh, Celestial Colonnade. Mm -hmm. No blocks for you. Just really, at this point, has to sit there and, and defend. The game is no, well in no, hand. No there's no threat to do anything to his Jace. I can tell you that we're going to game two of Guillaume Matignon against Eric Froelich next. Uh, they are very kindly waiting for us. Our Excellent. Global audience, God bless them. Uh, so at the conclusion of this one, we'll take you there. Randall on the right of your screen. De Rosa on the left. Paolo is going to spreading seas. He's going to spreading seas uh, uh, a planes. Okay. Wafa Tapper has uh, the first Jace on the board in game two. So uh, early early advantage to Wafa Tapper there. Give us the last for the game, Michelle. Uh, but there's another spreading season store. On the other planes. When Wafatapa subsequently got duressed, having uh, laid Jace, he revealed three more in hand. So I suppose I suppose the reason that uh, Apollo is putting the spreading seas on the planes and turning them into islands is he's likely holding a tectonic edge or the celestial colonnade. And also, right now, doesn't that reduce Randall to one white mana source, which would put him off Day of Judgment? I believe that is the case. So two spreading seas on Randall's planes. There is Day of Judgment, uh, double mana leak. Elster Tyrrell. I think he's up to two oust now in two hand. Two or three ousts. Yeah. Yep. He's just playing old-fashioned strip mine control here. Mm-hmm. And the clock is well and truly running uh, on Randall, who untaps. In your upkeep. Oh, there's a tectonic edge that was off camera. And does Randall have anything to do with mana? It looks like he's just going to put it straight to the graveyard. A 
it's gone. Oh, he could uh, he could use his own tectonic edge there, mm -hmm. in which case, Paula would get two lands, <laughs> happily. And Drawgo is fine, but not when you're at eight and uh, looking at a Jace TMS and a pair of Seagate Oracles. Brainstorm again. I see a Doomblade go into Paolo's hand. He's got Mystifying Maze there. An interesting card that uh, we haven't seen a lot of. I'm curious Kiss. if the other... I don't think the other control decks have that. No, I think that's a pretty unique. Paolo Christopher Wolf does not. Guillaume does not. Okay, Wapitaba does not. No, there's not one for Lucas Yaklovsky either. Guillaume Matignon does not. Nope. Mystifying Maze. Which could yet come into play uh, in a semi final, uh, potentially against Eric Froelich. Great shot over Paolo's shoulder there. You see his Seagate Oracle lands in front. A half hearted spreading seas from. Uh Randall. And they're waiting for their game too. You see Eric Froelich and uh, Guillaume Matignon uh, having a look in, saying, what's going on here then? Well, I can tell you boys that Randall is at six. Uh, and uh, Eric Froelich's looking sharp. Indeed he is. Like all true New York Mets fans. <laughs> yes. I don't think we've yet had to commentate on a known New York Yankees fan in the top eight. I don't believe so. What a relief. 